How you doing guys? It's Alessandro here from Spicy Moustache with some new tips in order to help you create in your own green area, indoor or outdoor, following the principles of do as nature does. Just as the food chain exists in our visible world, so it does exist in an invisible world. Microbes are extremely small forms of life that can only be seen under a microscope. There are approximately 2 to 10 billion microbes in just one gram of leaf mold. As they feed, excrete, die and decompose, soil environment recovers fertility and vitality. Most of the nutrients required by crops are produced by microbial activity. This is why it's really important to improve the amount of microorganisms in your soil. So dig up the like button and today I'll show you all you need to know to collect indigenous microorganisms for your garden. As reported by Mr. Cho, most microbes survive at a temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. Depending on the temperature they prefer, they are classified in five different categories. Usually, the lower the temperature the microbes likes, the smaller they are. Some microbes can also survive extreme low or high temperatures. If you catch a fly and you put it in the freezer, it will look dead, but whenever you take it out at room temperature, it will come back to life. And most microbes work in the same exact way. They adapted to their environment over a billion of years among the changes of nature. Once the conditions are not ideal for them, they just go dormant. Some microbes have been reported to wake up after thousands of years of dormancy to be fully active again. However, it's not about just introducing some microbes in your garden and expecting to have an increase in yield. When switching from conventional farming to natural farming, some people reported a decrease in harvest. This is because soil microbial activity has not yet fully normalized to the original natural level. All the pesticide, chemical fertilizer and herbicide have decreased the biodiversity population of microbial ecology. Even if you try to add organic matter to this kind of soil, the material are not broken down because of the weakness of the microbial activity. As a consequence, this will turn into nutrient deficiency for your crops, ending in a lower yield. Modern science known less than 1% of the total microorganisms in existence. We know this because only 1% of the total microorganism can be cultivated with the method developed by science. Obviously, if we can't cultivate them, we can't study them. Another interesting thing about microorganisms is that they are continuously evolving probably at a rate much faster than the development of science. It means that potentially we could never go over that 1% known by science. Modern science recommends to use only the good microorganisms and eliminate completely the bad ones. However, it doesn't make any sense to separate between good and bad microorganisms because we simply don't know enough about bad and good microorganisms. Now, don't get me wrong, some pathogens have been identified and studied, but most microbes are still unknown. Jadam sees this method of separating good and bad as non-scientific. But let's get straight to the point, what's a microorganism? Jadam sees microorganisms as workers. What we want is to boost the workforce in our garden, wherever our crops are, in order to maximize the harvest. The best way to do this is to bring workers from an environment as similar as possible to our garden. What I mean is with similar weather conditions, temperature and humidity. In this way, they will be already adapted to the growing condition of the area, surviving and adapting throughout the different changes of the season. This is why the first thing recommended by Jadam to make JMS is leaf mold as the starter to culturing your microorganisms. Jadam does not separate between bad and good bacteria in the leaf mold as narrowing them down means a selective use of microbes, which will result into an unbalanced nutrient solution for plant. Instead of doing that, you should start to expand and embracing the whole biodiversity of microorganisms. By restoring this biodiversity, you will achieve great results. To collect leaf mold, you just need to get to the closest area with a high vegetation and remove the first layer of leaves that you find on the floor that could be dry or fresh. And then you pick up the first layer of soil, which is decomposed leaves. The reason why you pick up this is because it's full of indigenous microorganisms that nature used 
to decompose these leaves and transform it into nutrients for the plant. Jadam also recommends to not collect it only from a single place, but from multiple places to have a better biodiversity and also to do it throughout different seasons because microbes keep evolving. Just keep your collection of leaf mold away from sunlight because you have to think that in nature, this layer of decomposed leaves is protected from the sun from another layer of fresh or dry leaves. If you don't have access to leaf mold, it's not a problem. As I explained in my previous video, you just need to collect some dry leaves, put it in a bag, and poke holes at the bottom and around the bag and keep it away from sunlight and just forget about it for like one or two years. You can also top it up and slowly it will transform into leaf mold. Once you've finished to do your collection of leaf mold, just remember to put back the dry leaves that were on the top as it's always good to be respectful for the gift that you're taking from Mother's Nature. After you collected your microorganisms, you can now start to culture it. Microorganisms usually take around 30 minutes to divide into two. This means that from one, you will have one million in around 10 hours. This also explains why disease can develop and spread so quickly over your crops. To grow microorganisms, you will need food for them, which is also called grow medium. Jadam tested a variety of mediums to cultivate microorganisms, and he got to the conclusion that potatoes are one of the best growing medium. You can get it anywhere in the world and it's one of the best and cheap things to feed your microorganisms. Sweet potatoes are also good to be used as a grow medium. All you need to do is to boil potatoes until soft and they will be ready to use. This method of using boiled potatoes helps to keep the pH of the water around 6.5, which is ideal for your soil. Every time that you use sugar or molasses for your compost tea, it will unbalance the pH level of your water, so you will have to adjust it, making things overcomplicated. The last thing recommended by Jadam is sea salt. If you think about it, we are talking about soil deprived by minerals, so this is why it involves using sea salt and not table salt, which is completely different and it's full of minerals. If used correctly, it will enrich your soil and help your microorganisms to thrive. Also, rainwater will help to push the sea salt and microorganisms deeper into your soil. Now that you gathered your ingredients, what you need is a plastic bucket and 15 liters of rainwater or unchlorinated water. To make unchlorinated water is really easy. You just need to leave your tap water open air for 24, 48 hours until most of the chlorine evaporates. The first thing will be to add 15 grams of sea salt to the water, so one gram every liter and stir well. I use two cheese clothes but Jadam recommends to use even a pair of socks if you don't have any cheesecloth. Put three boiled potatoes into one of the cheesecloth and just leave it on side. Put your leaf mold inside the second cheesecloth, which will be full of indigenous microorganisms. You could also add IMO 3 or 4 if you have it, but like in my case, I don't have it, so it's absolutely fine to use just your leaf mold. Now grab a small wood stick that you will use to suspend your two cheesecloth inside your water. The next step would be to squeeze your potatoes until you release all the starch inside the water. Continue to do so until they are well meshed. Now proceed to kind of massage the second bag with your leaf mold inside. Using a mesh with slightly bigger holes might help because some fungi are relatively bigger compared to other microorganisms. You can then cover it with a bag or some plastic and leave it in the same environment where your plants are growing. If it's really cold outside, you can wrap your bucket with something or you can use an aquarium heater to heat up the water. The colder the temperature, the longer it will take for microorganisms to multiply. After roughly 48 to 72 hours, you will see some bubbles forming on the surface of your water. When you see an even disc of foam on the top, it means it's ready to be diluted and used in your garden. The peak time to use your microbial solution is 12 hours, and after that time, the bubbles on the top will start degrading and they are no longer good to be used in your garden. If you did this procedure correctly, at the peak you will have roughly 1 billion microorganisms in 1 milliliter of water. If you don't see many bubbles on the surface and the temperature outside is really cold, just remember that the microorganisms thriving in colder temperature are with a smaller body 
which means you didn't do the procedure wrong. Use the microbial solution diluted at 120 and it works great when transplanting a seedling or whenever a plant is fruiting. Also Jadam recommends to use this all at once and start brewing a new batch as soon as you finish it. This dilution with a lot of water will make sure that the microorganisms go deep into your soil and start colonizing it. Making soil microorganisms active will suppress some pathogens and will make sure that these pathogens are not taking over your plants. There is no need to use any sort of air pump or to keep your temperature constant. The main concept of Jadam is to keep it simple and cheap. Microorganisms are everywhere. Every time you breathe in, you're breathing in microorganisms and we can't escape them except if we live in a clean room. Diversity is key because the plants will call upon this microorganism they need to transform minerals into nutrients. Without a large number of microorganisms in our soil, you can't be sure that the plants have access to the ones they need. Do not make farming an overcomplicated process and do as nature does. I hope you liked today's video and if so please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification settings so you can be notified every time I post a new video and I'll see you next week for a new episode. Thank you so much for watching. See ya!